Chapter One. She'd always loved the feeling of light coming in by the window. A slice of the outside would squeeze its way through like a piece of cheddar melting through a cheese grater, warmth spreading over her knees. Ruth, are you ready to go? Your family should be almost finished packing your things in the car. A familiar voice chimed through the air. Ruth looked up from the sun spilling on her lap to see a woman's freckled face looking kindly at her. She fit snug in her light pink nursing scrubs with little bees flying in presumable circles. Small paths of dotted lines flew out from the bees' back end and swirled around like a stretched-out spring. A white plastic oval was pinned to the left side of the woman's chest that read, Sunshine Gardens, and directly under, Linda. Linda shuffled over to a textured yet worn oatmeal-colored armchair and picked up a wicker basket full of things. A handful of rubber tree leaves sprouted from the top and shifted as she picked it up from the seat. Thank you, Linda. A new voice came into the room. Ruth turned her head away from the window toward the door behind her. A woman with a long torso paired with short legs walked quickly in, her feet whirring like a spinning bicycle chain. Her straight brown hair was pulled back with a few loose pieces around her face that were tucked back around her ear. She had a small furrow in her brow that stayed put even as she smiled and said, Thank you, to Linda, and took the basket from her. Mom, are you ready? Ruth looked at her for a few moments, taking in the details of her face. The woman let out a small sigh, put the basket on the oatmeal chair again, and sat next to Ruth. Mom, we have to go. She spoke in almost a question. The words hung quietly in the air, bait on fishing line. Ruth looked into her deep brown eyes and a flash of a small girl in a rainbow-striped dress raced through her mind. Harriet. Ruth's eyelids raised slightly as she inhaled. Okay, there we go, Harriet said as she gently placed her hand between Ruth's bony shoulder blades. Let's get up and go to the car. Linda and Harriet walked Ruth out of her room, through the hallways and open areas of Sunshine Gardens. There was an overwhelming amount of cream and white as if the entire place was made of chalk. Light monochromatic floral and simple graphic motifs made a patchwork of designs that stretched across cushioned armchairs and small rectangle tables like a giant mismatched quilt. Everything was so clean but smelled stale, as if none of the windows or doors were ever opened. Large panes of glass lit in huge geometric sections of bright sun, but all the interior lights were on, causing a slightly off-putting middle tone. Ruth reached out her hand to push on the metal handle of a glass double door. Linda beat her to it. I gotcha. The warmth of the day rushed upon her like an eight-foot wave. Her eyes squinted when they met the sun, partly shielding themselves, partly relishing the feeling of it on her skin. How did the heat manage to creep in through her clothes? The air moved around her, encapsulating her in a feeling of safety. Tiny hands pushing her along, not letting her fall. They stopped beside a parked car. It looked white, but as her eyes adjusted, she saw it was silver. It looked new and anonymous. The windows were rolled down, and a small head beamed up at her. Come on, Nana. I'll scoot over. A small girl with candy-colored headphones over her ears chirped loudly and moved toward the other side of the car. Ah, watch it, a deeper voice barked from inside. Sorry, Hunter. I'm trying to make room for Nana. The sweet girl's tone took a sharp turn, emphasizing the first and last word with little verbal punches. Open the door for her first, Joy, Harriet said. Joy lurched her small body forward and haphazardly pushed the car door open, almost hitting Ruth's legs. Joy, take your headphones off. Jeez, you need to be more careful around Nana. Jacob, can you help? A man sitting in the driver's seat slowly responded. Uh, what's that, honey? His gaze was locked into a small, shiny phone, resting in his palms. He vigorously thumbed at its hard, rectangular surface. Oh, sorry. What's that, honey? He repeated as he took his eyes away from the screen and shifted to the scene unfolding in the back seat. Are you ready to board the crazy train, Ruth? He chuckled. Harriet rolled her eyes and smirked. Joy, scoot over. Move your iPad so Nana can sit next to you. Ruth felt Harriet's arm hold her up as she let her weight ease into the car. She adjusted herself into her seat, and the door pushed in after her. She couldn't remember the last time she had been in a car. 
Seems so small with all these people in it. A crowded elevator, just enough space to fit but not to move. Joy's restless backside wiggled closer to Ruth. A slightly dirty screen was placed on her lap. What looked like an animated robot fox jumped over pools of water and onto peach-colored rocks. It jumped and at the top of the arc made contact with a coin spinning in the air. The fox continued down to the adjacent edge of the pond and the coin zipped up into the sky. A playful electronic melody drifted out of the candy headphones. Next to Joy, a teenage boy focused on his hands that were lazily draped across his thighs. He had sharp features, as if his bones were growing so fast his skin couldn't keep up. Harriet and Linda were talking outside, and Ruth could see that the boy was focused on their words without turning to look. Well, thank you again so much, Linda, for everything you guys have done for her. I wish she could stay, but it's just, oh, too hard right now. Harriet and Linda were speaking in a hushed tone, but everyone in the car could hear them. Well, we're so sorry to see her go, but of course we understand how life can be. Ruth has been wonderful, and she's always welcome back if it's the right thing for you guys. Well, thank you, Linda. And we know home care can be tough, so please don't hesitate if anything comes up, okay? Thank you, Harriet repeated. Hunter tucked in and chewed on his bottom lip. He looked at Ruth, and his expression softened. He reached across Joy and put his hand on top of hers. Are you ready, Nana? he said gently. His sharpness dulled to an amiable invite until he heard Harriet say, All right, time for us to head out. Then his head swiveled over his left shoulder and out toward the parking lot. Linda looked at Ruth, gave a wistful smile, and put her hand on Ruth's shoulder. We'll miss you, Ruth. Ruth felt a small flutter in her chest as Linda pulled her hand away. She looked intently at her freckles and took note of the shape they made if you connected all of them with lines, like the outline of a country on an old map. Harriet climbed into the front seat with the basket and Ruth's rubber plant in her lap. Jacob started the car and they pulled away, Harriet waving, Joy following suit, and Ruth watching Linda and her pink scrubs get smaller and smaller as they drove away. If he touches the water, then he drowns, but he has to jump over the big puddles. You have to be careful because sometimes they're geysers and you need to jump high enough to get coins so you can buy stuff to make them better. You just have to tap twice, but not too hard and not too soft. You want to try? Joy let out a long string of words without a breath in between and put her iPad on Ruth's lap. You just tap here. Joy's small fingers moved smoothly over to a smudged area of the screen where a blue-gray button bobbed under the glass like a fish looking up through a thinly frozen lake. Tap right here, Nana. Ruth looked at the button. The fox waited at the edge of the pond, moving like the floating button. Occasionally, as if out of impatience, it would jump in the air and fidget. Just tap here, Nana, see? Joy reached across and double-tapped the smeared area. The fox bent its knees and sprung across the pond. Small blue fish with rapidly gnawing mouths jumped out of the water as he passed. Oh, yeah, those are the piranhas. You have to watch out for those. You try now, Joy said expectantly. Joy, Nana doesn't want to play your game, sweetie. She doesn't know how to use your iPad, Harriet said from the front seat without turning around. Well, why doesn't Nana want to do anything? And why won't she talk? Hunter, who had been staring out the window, turned to Joy and gave her a strong poke in the side. Now shut up, Joy. Stop being rude. Harriet turned around and faced Hunter. Oh, look who's talking, she said sardonically, raising her eyebrows. Hunter grimaced at his mother and looked back out the window at the traffic racing past in the opposite direction. Harriet turned to Joy. Oh, sweetie, it's been a while for Nana. You have to be patient with her. Do you understand? Why is she coming home with us? Joy asked with a big frown. How long is she staying? Well, we don't know yet. We have to see. If your dad can find work again, then maybe not for too long. Uh, speaking of which, Jacob said, when we get back, I have a phone call with the people from Allegiant. Might have an opening. Oh, that's right, Harriet recalled. Well, Hunter can help me unload the car until you're done, right? Hunter gave a small nod but kept looking out the window, his nose a few inches from the glass. Joy looked up at Ruth and took her iPad back. Well, how about some music, Harriet said. Joy made a quick noise of agreement, her focus back on her game. Harriet pushed a black dial on the dashboard, and a light sound came up from the car's floor. A female voice sang amidst a chorus of background vocals and heavily produced bass. 
Harriet spun the dial, blips of vocals, beats, and instruments shouted for split seconds before Harriet changed the station. A long, drawn-out cello reached through the speakers. It sounded like the voice of someone she knew, calling out to her as common and intimate as spouses saying good morning to each other. There was the hint of a melody, but the long, pulled-out strings sent electricity through Ruth, filling her nerves with rapid lightning. What was that? Ruth let out a small involuntary sound and looked directly at the radio. Joy immediately noticed and looked at Ruth. Nana, did you hear something you like? Ruth looked at Joy with wide eyes. Oh, Mom, go back. Nana likes the song back there. Harriet responded by flipping back. The one with guitars, said Joy. Oh, half of them have guitars, muttered Harriet. She settled on a song with a guitar and steel drums weaving together. No, not this one, Joy insisted. Go further back. Harriet adjusted the dial once more, and the melody came flooding in. Oh, shoot, they're calling early. Jacob took his phone from the cup holder of the car. The phone was connected to the radio, and the jarring ring had interrupted the music. Hey, Mr. O'Connell, this is Ron Douglas from Allegiant HR. We'd love to chat with you if you have a moment, a voice boomed loudly out of the car speakers. Harriet quickly turned down the volume. Hunter perked up, obviously listening. Hey, Ron. Sorry I'm driving at the moment. I wasn't expecting a call this early. Yeah, I apologize about that. We're ahead of schedule. We can call back if now is inconvenient. Not a problem. Jacob shook his head and collected himself. Yeah, let me give you a call back in ten. Is that okay? Yeah, great. Talk then. Perfect. Thanks. Ron hung up, and after a few seconds, the melody came rushing back. <laughs> 